everybody and welcome to today's episode of Lockdown Lads. I am so lucky. I have three, yes, three heartthrobs on the show today. <laughs> I have still got all of their posters on my wall, especially nice. Jeremy's, as we all know. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but I do want to introduce them to you one by one. First of all, a great friend of mine, Mr. Greg Burns, a brilliant award-winning comedian. He does all the crackers in Hull. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Greg, I had to say that. But he also is the Hits Radio Breakfast TV, uh, Breakfast Radio presenter. Absolutely brilliant. We've been on holiday together. We know each other inside out. All right. And I'm sure things are coming out a bit, little bit later on. Um, <laughs> my next guest is the brilliant Jeremy Edwards. Everybody knows him from Holly, Hollyoaks, Hollywood, and Holby City. Uh, he's also in Midian in between and a regular guest on The Right Staff. And he's a brilliant guy. Love him lots. We've, we all know each other for a long, long time. We still look fabulous. Well, apart from the guy, Andy, look at him. Look at that face. Look at that <laughs> beard. You must make sure that you start shaving, Andy, please. Oh, shut up. He yeah, don't, start, Hull's, don't start all day. He's Hull's biggest export. They just never want him back. Um, please welcome Mr. Andy Newton Lee. So great to see you all, you guys. Yeah, Love guys. You all. Lads. Lovely uh, to be here. At the beginning of the show, we always talk, talk about topical things. And obviously, the first thing we need to talk about is Dominic Cummings because it's on the tip of everyone's tongue how yeah. he gets away with doing something which everybody else has been told to stay home. He can drive all the way up to Durham and then look at his eyesight for some strange reason um, in a car and then basically the whole of the government are defending him. So yeah. Boris Johnson in the poll has gone right down and it really has polarized the whole of the UK. But the main thing is it's made this whole stay at home thing completely obsolete because he's the guy that came up with it. So Greg, what do you think about this whole situation? Um, well, I mean, I, I, I can't believe for a minute he's going to be able to hold on. Um, I mean, it couldn't really be any worse. You know, it's, it's, it's not just it's not just marginally breaking. It's one end of the country to the other. You couldn't go much further and still be in in England. Um, and I, yeah, I think it's it's very much. I think Boris. I thought I thought Boris was on the verge of coming out of this very well. Um, you know, there was I think there was there was obviously a lot of goodwill for the government with the whole furlough scheme, which obviously has saved a lot of people. There was a kind of the narrative with Boris beating coronavirus, becoming a new dad, and all that sort of stuff. But then all of a sudden, it's brought it back to a them and us situation. And he's just point blank. I mean, it's almost Trump-like mm. in, um, in his just complete denial about uh, it. I, I, complete... can, am I allowed to interject? Yes, of yeah. course you are. I, I, no, I love you, Greg. But I mean, at, at what point did you think that Boris was going to come out of this looking good? It's been, the whole thing's been handled atrociously from the beginning. It's so obviously about the economy in terms of shutting down everything far too late, which could have factually saved uh, thousands and thousands of lives. Uh, this is of no surprise to me that Dominic Cummings won't apologise, that he uh, won't admit he's done it wrong. It's no surprise to me at all that Boris Johnson and his cronies uh, are on side with him because effectively he's employed by the Prime Minister to be his aide. That means he's his primary advisor. He's not an MP. We didn't vote for him. So in this respect, I don't think that we have a right to ask him to resign because it's like, you can, you, if you pay an agent or you, uh, anyone, then that's up to you, right? Now, the fact that he advises the government, it's up to Boris whether he takes that advice or not. Yes, I think he broke the rules. I think it's ridiculous for him not to apologise and to, to, to stop this web of lies that he has, uh, that he started, which is just digging in deeper and deeper and deeper. But he's not going to resign, simple fact, because they don't give a shit, because they've got four more years in, 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 uh, in office and uh, they will just, they, like they always do, they'll ride it through. But I do think that, I mean, I think the biggest problem is that Dominic Cummings didn't apologise. Saying sorry to people is one of the most important things you can do. And he has been given two opportunities right from the beginning yes. and then yesterday when he had that sort of press conference. And those opportunities just to say, look, guys, I'm really sorry. But even not doing that just makes but, it makes a mockery of us. No, but there's a reason why. Sorry, Nick, there's a reason why he would have been brief not to say sorry, because by admitting fault, then you are then culpable. Uh, okay. And therefore, he gained, should be dismissed by, by uh, that's the whole thing. This is what I hate mm -hmm. about politics is that they'd rather avoid and say, well, he never at any point, he said that he would get things uh, right. And he said that he would make mistakes. He never said he'd get things right and get things wrong. 
So yeah. it's very important that he's kept using the word, and then I, make a, I may have made a mistake. Never made anything wrong. I, I, I make these decisions all, all day, every day, and quite often I get them right, and sometimes I make a mistake. And that really stuck in my brain, because he nice. can't seem to be doing things wrong. Sorry, Andy. Nice. Sorry, Jeremy. I, I, I appreciate your passion so much on this, but if there was ever a moment as, as um, when it, anyone in a position of power, whether it be Trump, whether it be Boris, whether it be anyone, now is the time where, where, where we do as, do as we, do as we say, sorry, what, what, what's the saying I'm saying? You've got to be the change you, to be the change you want to see. You can't, you can't, it's, it's, it's like your father telling you to tidy your room when his bedroom's a, a shithole or a dump, you know, you, you can't, you can't dictate to people. And then because people go, it demonstrates all these mixed signals you're saying one thing at one part, in one sentence, and then you're doing the opposite. Yeah. And ordinary people can't grasp that message. And that's so what and you Jeremy was saying. You need to lead by example. That's, that's exactly, thing. Jeremy. You Thank you. By example. And I do think the fact that it was his wife's birthday on that Sunday that he visited. You know the what? Hospital. So, excuse me. So what if it was his wife's birthday? My sister had a baby um, on the 23rd no, 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 of May no. yesterday. You misunderstand. I'm still I'm in LA. I'm still in LA. I'm feeling this. You know, who, who are these people? Like, um, yeah, I know, I'm, mate. You, you know, baby, yeah, I know you know my sister's name. I wasn't saying, I wasn't excusing him. What I was saying is that it was pretty obvious that the reason that he travelled out on that day trip wasn't to test his eyesight, was because he wanted to take his missus out for a birthday treat. Um, I know, I Jeremy. Saying. Yes. Yes, mate. So... So let's let's call him out on that. Let's call him out. We all we all know what we all know. I thought you were about to call him, Andy. I thought you were about well, to grab I, I, him. I'm, 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 I'm ready to get on the I'm ready to get on the phone with these people because I t I'll tell you what I'm up this mountain and I'm just watching this unfold before me and it's a, it's an it's a, it's an absolute apocalyptic disaster. You know the UK and the US are, are just it's it's I, I can't even grasp what I'm seeing. You might no, as well just. You're, you might as well just neutralise everything, guys, and just say the, people. Andy, LA. Yeah. Obviously, that hasn't affected you at all. I can tell by the way you are. Um, so I'm just thinking, um, how has it affected though the rest of the nation? Uh, are you seeing? Are you? Well, is there, is there, <laughs> well, Jeremy, you've you've spent a lot of time, um, you know, living and working in the US over the last five yes. years, so you understand how it works here. Um, you also understand how. How, how difficult the the uh, the public services are to navigate because I my family worked with you on your visa didn't um, didn't we yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Very, very difficult process so firstly you've got immigration then you've got the borders then you've got public services then you've got medical systems mm -hmm. you know it's it's very hard isn't it Jeremy and Americans don't know how hard it is because they don't recognize the rest of the world. And that's the problem with this. Yeah, think, yeah. They're polarized. What is happening to America, Jeremy, is they're paying the ultimate price for voting a reality television star as, as their president. Because, you know, it's not even about politics at the moment. It, it's about polarity and it's about what we see in front of us. So you've got this mad, this, 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 this guy, President Trump, you know, who has invited me to this wonderful country, which has been, has given me so much. So I'm just, I'm just talking about this from a neutral point. But yeah. I feel that Mr. Trump is, is sending people in different directions with his message. So but I don't think it know. has given you so much, Andy. I think you've taken, and I don't mean that in any disparaging way, but I guess, no, no, nothing's given anything in America. I think this is my the point is in America, it is very much a case of you have to come and you have to, be, this balls out, man. I mean, people just, if you, if, you know, it's a very different attitude to the UK, but we're talking about this. It is. Issue in terms survival, of survival, it's. Survival of the fittest, Jeremy. 15 yeah, yeah, years on Hollywood Boulevard, mate. 15 years on Hollywood Boulevard, mate. So, I think, yeah, I think what's really interesting though, about it, Andy, is that you is, for instance, I've got some friends who live in, uh, in Texas, and they've said to me, Nick, are you going to come over to our wedding in August? And we're like, well, actually, we don't know whether we'll probably be allowed to be in the country. And they're like, what? We're out. You're not there. allowed at the moment, mate. You're not they have, allowed. They have You're no allowed. idea what's going on in the rest of the world. They're in a, in, a, in a crazy bubble. A lot of them haven't traveled, so they don't understand that. And we're in this really weird situation. Nick, the other person Nick, I wanted to I'm sorry. To Jeremy, uh, Jeremy was that I, and, and you as well, Greg, was one of the people I'm most disappointed in all of this is Rishi. You know, he came across as somebody who, as a chancellor, was really helping out, as you said, Greg, with regards to furlough schemes, with, with what he's doing with the arts, because the arts are totally yeah. messed up. 
And now suddenly, you know, the biggest problem that's happened <laughs> is that um, because, you know, because of him siding with Dominic Cummins, you've kind of, you feel you've lost your trust in him. Do you agree, Greg? Yeah, I do. I mean, yeah, yeah. and you're right. You're absolutely right about um, Richie. I think even, well, obviously the furlough scheme came out pretty quickly, but the, obviously the way that he's come across and handled himself has been, um, has got a lot of people on side. But yeah, absolutely. It's, they're all going to be tarred with, with the same the same brush. I, as I say, probably the first thing I said at the start, I can't see it. I, I think Jeremy said that he won't resign. I think he probably, I think they'll have to do something. He might not actually resign, but I think they'll have to take a stand at some point and soon and, and he'll end up doing something in the background. But yeah, I think a lot of damage has been done in, um, yeah, uh, yeah, Rishi and, 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 and the, you know, the, the rest of the, the cabinet are going to suffer a lot from it. It's, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a huge, I mean, it's, it's a, to, I mean, they've managed to overshadow a global pandemic. I know, it's crazy. Do you know what I mean? Like, like it, 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 this has become the story. Um, and that t- takes some doing. Well, you know what's really interesting now, obviously, that we are hopefully going to stage two and we're coming a little bit out of lockdown and things are, well, they're not getting back to normal, but they are getting back to the new normal. One of the big things is shopping and everybody loves shopping. And as you can imagine, you know, living in Manchester and living in LA and, and in London, you know, retail is huge. And the idea now is that the high street doesn't look particularly sexy anymore. You know, it's going to be single file. It's going to be wearing gloves. Everybody's going to be sprayed. The actual experience of going to, say, Selfridges or Harvey Nichols or coming into town is not going to be what it was before. Do you, Would you go shopping into town or are you going to go online? Or what, what do you think about it? Personally, personally, I will. I think I will still um, use the shops. I, I've been, I, I live very much in a city centre, very near the city centre. I think, I think obviously the online thing was already happening. Me personally, I will still go to the high street. And I will still go to the stores. Part, well, certainly in, in the short term, because it will be such a novelty. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was holding a Starbucks cup yesterday and I couldn't stop staring at it. Anything that's got... Why, did they spell your name that. right? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I do think, I think it's going to be a huge disaster. And it'll be so sad to see so many... I mean, what, what is going to be really... Um, heartbreaking is when we get as close to back to normality as as we as we can to see what's left because mm. how tragic is it going to be to see the decimated high street and when the, all the shops can open and so let's see how many of them actually can open um, yeah. so I think a lot of them when, when you've got like sort of, what is it something like a dozen of the Debenham stores won't ever reopen again it's yeah but they were, they were, they were fa- Debenhams were facing uh, you know uh, they, they were facing bankruptcy anyway yeah, uh, yeah. They'd be, they were about to be but I think I always look at things with a glass half full and I think that this is a good thing obviously not the deaths that would be a ridiculous statement I'm talking about in terms of the economy and the sharing of money going forward uh, even Boris said, you know, we need to look at the distribution of wealth. And I think that's very important. I think it's made people think very differently about life. You've seen the Madonna, I think you saw the Madonna tweets where she was saying, you know, we're all, you know, fry fish or whatever, you know. But basically everyone just got really fucked up by it. They were like, oh my gosh, it affects everybody equally. Um, I think that's a good thing. I think that a lot of the overpriced uh, city dwellings and, and business uh, rent and all that will have to disappear because they've realized that people can work from home. I think that uh, it will, it will change the, the economic outlay massively. And the, the, I think the ecosystem will benefit enormously. So I'm trying to do uh, enormously as a result. So it's kind of an, dare I say it, a necessary evil. Like I said, I don't, I do not in any way condone the, uh, the, the, the deaths that have, have, have occurred because of this, but it, it's almost a point where you, if you push something hard enough, it's going to break. You know, and um, I personally will be happy to go shopping again. I personally think that uh, this is a bit of an outlandish thing to say, but I personally think that uh, most people have had the virus in some way, shape or form. And only those that were ever going to be uh, affected by it to a point of, you know, e- extremities are the, are, have already. I, I don't know about the second wave thing. I'm not too sure. I think there will be a, a bigger infection rate, but I don't know there will be a bigger death rate. This is a this is a very different show from the one I thought it was going to be. But look, we know what Andy's been well, doing in his in his quarantine time. He's been ranting. But I'll yes. tell you what you've been doing, Jeremy. He's always been like expertly quiffing yourself. Um, well, yeah. That when you're drunk. But <laughs> I'm going to move on now and talk about what, what our top tips of stuff that we have been doing during quarantine and whether we've learned something new. And so, Jeremy, I'm coming to you. Obviously, 
you know, what have you been doing? It's a very difficult, I, I was thinking about that question when I saw it uh, on, the, on the show uh, rundown earlier. I have a three-year-old daughter and as boring as it is to say, that's it, man. It's yeah. like, it's 24 Mate, seven. Amazing. No. It's a, no, it's wonderful. No, no, I don't, don't I, I no, love no, it. Great. Me no, no. But it's, uh, this for me is a, is a, is a massive, it, it, it's, it's a huge break just to chat with some guys. Uh, but you, it's, it's very difficult with the um, preschool shut, everything shut, playground shut. Uh, be able to see, excuse me, be able to see family members, all the stuff that you rely on when you've got a little one because they are just like a little ball of energy. And so, uh, I basically what I've been focusing on is making sure that my marriage stays alive by trying to share the workout equally or as much as we can with our little one and making sure that she doesn't get too spoiled. Um, so I really, I haven't done any, I write, by the way, I script write as well, and I do all kinds of, normally, but this is my little office space that I sit, and I just have no time for this, because it's just scarlet from seven in the morning till seven at night, and then you're knackered. I go to bed yeah. at like 8.39. So Greg, what about you? Obviously, I mean, you know, the dating apps are probably void for you now. <laughs> so how are you feeling? Really you know that you think that's all Greg is about, Nick. I, I just, um, <laughs> I take exception to that. Left and swipe right, that's all I know him for. <laughs> well, do you know what? Or, in, 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 a weird, in a weird kind of way, I feel like, um, I feel like I've sort of um, adapted and coped with lockdown a lot better than some people because I wasn't coping that well before lockdown. Um, <laughs> in the, uh, um, and it's kind of because it, it's, it's um, you know, it brings it all on the same level. I mean, I think for me, because I went in 2016, I went to Australia to live for three years. And, um, you know, try, was, you know, trying to... Re, well, Greg, you know, Greg, Greg, I also want to say, mate, I also want to say, you move into Australia and me moving to LA, it's all a self-isolation exercise, isn't it? Because well, it, it, you're taking exactly so it. far out, you think it's home. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. it. That's exa that is exactly it. And so, to be honest, and I came back from um, Australia just less than a year ago, but I moved to Manchester again, not a city that I'm from or know. So I feel like I've been training for this. This, um, this the last couple of months has just it's 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 a leveler isn't it everyone's sort of on the same greg 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 it's extra time on our sentence mate it's extra time yeah. on our sentence and i always say i've been chatting to my old friends in hull all the single people uh really interesting and i just said you know what they're all flourishing we're all at home doing things because we're on our own we're, we're getting in our critical mode and we're being our most authentic self so this is just extra time for some people so those that are failing or feel that they're failing at the minute, you can, you can flip it over. My, my mum's even surrendered. You, you know what I'm saying? My mum is the, the, the most, she wants to take control of everything and she's gone, son, let's sell the house. Let's see what's out there. Let's live the rest of our lives. And that's my mother and that's my greatest project. <laughs> and she surrendered. I think, I think to your point, uh, Jeremy, before you were talking about lockdown, but I was thinking that, especially with property and stuff like that, so many of my friends who live in London and luckily have second homes in the country, none of them want to come back to London. None no. of them feel the need really? to have to, uh, yeah, to come in and commute. They all want to just stay out in the country because they see everybody who's been in lockdown is having, who lives in the country, well, has a nice life. Nick. The communities that, wait, wait, Andy, the community feeling is much better. They don't need the the they, they don't need all the stuff that we think that we need in London or in these big cities. So I think it's going to be such a difference in well, where I, people will want to be and live. I think um, very quickly because I know Andy wants to speak very quickly. I, I I completely agree with you because I've moved down to Winchester, which is an hour out of London, and we have a house with a garden as opposed to like a, a flat. It was a nice flat, you know, in a good area of London, but it still was a flat. And I I'm, I'm very thankful that I, especially having a daughter, obviously. But uh, yeah, I think that a lot of people will look at the quality of life more now in mm. terms of, and with the idea of uh, not necessarily, a lot of people working from home and not wanting to do that commute anymore or not having to do that commute anymore. But I think it will have a massive impact on all the cafes and bars around oh. the city or, or anywhere in central London that um, rely on those workers' lunches, you know? Um, yeah. yeah. 
So there's a really interesting Andy, article. Andy, 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 sorry, Andy. Here he goes. It's all right, Nick. It's all right, Nick. Um, I think uh, I've been quite mindful with my internet. I know it's a revolution, um, babe. That, so, let's just revolt a bit more. Shut up, mate. Right, listen. Um, I just think, right, who, who wants to be in, in crowded spaces in, in a city that's populated densely um, with tensions running high? Who wants to be in that environment? I would imagine that property prices in London are going to plummet because I own a house in Hull, right? I own a six bedroom detached house, which I've, I've got on for sale for 380,000, right? And you know, when I felt this, at the start of lockdown, somebody put a note through my parents' door saying, we want to buy your house because it's, it's one of the kind in the area. It's six bedrooms, yeah. right? And you can't get this configuration. So what that leads me to believe is that people are going to move out the, um, the densely populated areas into quiet air, quieter areas and to cheaper areas and to places where they can be more serene, just like Jeremy was Definitely. saying, just like Jeremy's yes. done. And, and, you, you, recognize, yeah. and with the... Uh, I think, I mean, I, I was London born and bred, so like, I still love London. I, I, can't, I couldn't afford to have the house I have here in London. Simple fact. And, yeah. something. and uh, also, would I bring my child up in London? No, not really. Um, if I can help it. In the, here, we've got wonderful... Look, I, I just think I agree with Andy, and I think that everyone's been London-centric, or, or whether any major city-centric. It is London mainly, though, and you pay an absolute fortune, and realistically... I think the prices are going to drop in London because for that reason, people are going to look for a better quality of life and they maybe have to do one or two days a week in London, which case just jump on a train. You don't have to do that horrible commute every day. Listen, so, listen, Jeremy, we, we're all self-employed in this group. You know, um, Nick, Nick's, Nick's been working from home. I've worked all over the world for 15 years, guys. You know that I've, I've parted with Greg in Sydney. I've parted with Nick in LA. I've parted with Jeremy in, in Cannes. I, we've, I've been everywhere with you guys. Yes. And I've been working remotely. Yeah, I've been working remotely for years. You know, so what a lot of companies are going to do is they're just going to reevaluate their infrastructure and about well, my, how they operate. Because I have a friend, and I can't name names, but... I, uh, who had a very big film company and they have uh, two floors of a, of a building in Golden Square that cost them a million pounds a year in rent. They're already going to downsize to only half a floor, saving themselves 1.5 because they pay two million a year because they realized during this lockdown that they, only, they need a presence, but they don't need people coming into work all the time. But obviously, still have the office. Um, my friend, Jeremy, Google, Jeremy. no one's coming back in Google till January. Google aren't opening, they don't want anyone so to Twitter say they don't need to come back at all. They can all listen, work listen. Twitter. I think one of the things is really interesting, I don't know, uh, you obviously as actors, uh, Sonia Friedman, who is a big producer, yeah. Maria Friedman's yeah, yeah, sister, she wrote this brilliant piece in The Telegraph this week, which is all about um, how theatre, especially around the whole of the UK is a hub. You know, so when a big show, whether it's Priscilla or Mamma Mia comes to Manchester or Newcastle or Liverpool, it increases footfall, it increases groups, yeah. it increases, you know, it, it creates a huge hub. And what she's saying is there's this massive hole that's going to be in place for the next year or so while they try and get this back. And that, that really does affect me. So what you're saying, I totally agree with you with regards to people coming out of the cities but the biggest problem is is that these shows rely on yeah, yeah. Tourism. it's a real and listen i think this this whole shift is gonna be really interesting i mean greg for you you've been working non-stop so it's kind of not not been much of a change for you yeah i mean i have but i mean uh, for the radio show i'm actually the only presenter on the entire lineup that's actually going into the radio station um so that's my choice but everyone else is doing it from home to, and reasonably successfully but, um, you know, the technology, uh, by which I mean the technology is, is, is pretty much there. But I, I for one, I'd be, um, I'd hate, I wouldn't want to work, with, no matter what I did. I, I think it would be a shame, especially for London. Um, you know, I, I, I lived in London most of my life. And to not have that after work culture and, 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 and actually the culture of going to work. I mean, maybe it's just, I know, I know not everyone feels, um, no, I know not everyone feels like this. Um, so I just lost you. I know not everyone feels like this about their work, and maybe I've just been lucky. But I like going to an office. I like going into a city, and I like yeah, finishing work. And, and that you know, there's nothing <laughs> like that feel in London at half five. And what I've really found is like I did, I thought this. I thought every city was like that until I've, I've lived in other cities. 
But every night of the week at five thirty, London's got that buzz, and I think it'll be such well, a shame. Well, guys, that. guys, didn't we all? Didn't we all used to meet in Grouch Show when I used to share an office with Nick Eads for when I was staying at the London branch of my company? You know, me, Nick, and then you know Jeremy's lurking somewhere at Soho House. I was always Soho House. Yeah. <laughs> I love the oh, fact yeah. that you're talking about lurking. Only you can say the word <laughs> well, lurking. Lurking. Yeah, all lurking, lurking with all. I know it sounds really murky, murky, lurky. There's Andy Newton <laughs> Lee. Where's Andy Newton Lee? Somewhere. He's in some bar somewhere, somewhere at 5:30. <laughs> <laughs> I think, what, listen, I think everything that we're talking about is really interesting and a lot of it uh, comes back to how this is going to affect us both financially, physically and also mentally. And one of the reasons that we set this up was to talk about mental health and talk about what everyone's going through because this is such an unprecedented time and it's very interesting what people are doing. And yeah. um, there's actually a new, in the workplace, there's a new virtual reality called Talk Out app. And basically what it is, you can put on some virtual reality glasses and be in an environment where potentially there are obstacles, which are to do with your emotional well-being and the work environment and helping people, especially guys, navigate that. Because as we all know, men don't talk as freely as women do. And yeah. HR is in every way. Um, do you think that's a good thing, Greg, to be much more open about how you're feeling and these kind of apps which are helping you talk about things more? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, I, I mean, that one of the one of the unique upsides of this is I think it has focused everybody. Um, you have to make people are making, you know, you're making more of an effort to talk to people because you have to go out of your way, and therefore I think that automatically is making people people talk more. And 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 you're right, um, definitely, definitely from a male point of view, that is that is definitely happening a lot more. I, I've certainly. I not. I haven't sort of had a like a scattergun approach. Of, I've I've concentrated on like uh, a smallish group of friends who I've been regularly sort of phoning or FaceTiming through this period of time. I phoned you, Jeremy. I phoned you yesterday. <laughs> I phoned me yesterday. Hey guys, hey guys, hey guys. Calling you out now, Greg. No, 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 no. I'm gonna go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I haven't had a scatter. I've just focused on a few key people. And both Nick and myself sit back and go, Andy obviously got a call. We didn't get a fucking call. <laughs> <laughs> there was no call. We had a FaceTime about two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, th I think this will change um, uh, the way people talk about it, um, you know, mental health. And I, and I think it will. There's, there's a strange sort of, I mean, it, do you know what? Now, at the end of all this, we will all have a unique We've all gone through this one massive thing in life uniquely that's together, pulled though. us all together. Yeah. yeah. It's just, it's, and it's a huge life changing experience that every single person on the planet pretty much has, has gone through. And I think that, may, that might end up being quite a bonding thing that we've all lived I, through. Um, I openly talk about my, I, 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 when you say mental health, it's weird, isn't it? That even when I say mental health problems, I feel like I'm scarring myself or putting myself up there for some sort of vilification or whatever, when I, you know, I just am a regular guy, but I do suffer from anxiety, uh, anxiety. And uh, it's a real thing. And I take tablets for it and everything. And um, I don't know why I do, but I do. And yet I have bizarrely found this calming. Yeah, I this totally agree. Been, but why do you find a, it calming? Because it's, you know, uh, every... Lack of control. The thing is, okay. my anxiety comes from one... To, again, I think it, I'm, I'm hoping that you guys will uh, join in with it. It's when you're self-employed and you're hustling, right? Uh, and you're every day, you never stop working. And uh, when you're working, when I'm at work, that's, my, that's the least amount of work I'm doing. As in when I'm not working is when I'm fucking working, 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 working. And... The anxiety that I feel is because I go to bed, I worry about finances or this job, is this happening or what am I going to do this and the other. And so that's why I suffer from anxiety. I know it's from, from, from that. But when this all kicked off, I had this, it's like, I used to say I love getting on long plane journeys because no one can touch me. No one can. Yeah, and yeah. I, and I could just switch off. There's no one, And it almost felt a bit like that. And I'm actually, in that respect, found it quite calming because yeah. no one can work. Nothing's happening. Yeah. So not, not missing anything. But yeah, you, yeah it's just your, your responsibilities feel less. Anyone else? Yeah. You think that? What about, what about you, Andy? Sorry, what was the question? I just lost you with technical issues. Oh, sorry. I, I We're just basically talking about mental health and basically talking about talking about it more. Oh, God. Oh, God. Listen. Listen, guys. Where do I start with mental health? 
I feel it first and I feel it hard. Um, I think I've even pissed some people off during this process that have taken a little bit of a back step from me because, you know, it, it was a bold choice for me to do this on my own because ultimately I, I want to go back to Hull. I want to go see my mum and dad. My sister's had a baby. We've all done it late. You know, the dialogue's consistent with where I'm at mentally, but I'm sticking it out and I'm trying to, I'm using it as like a, like a look. I'm, I'm imagining that I'm in, I'm in jail and um, I've got this, I've, I'm in a luxury prison. And That's, a <laughs> yeah. good. That's a really yeah, good mate, picture, all, I like that. All these, all these wankers at home that are moaning about staying at home when they've got these beautiful houses. I just think, I just think, Andy, I don't, can we, can I can't, well, I look outside at your pool. I know, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but Nick Ede, Nick Ede will know this. Nick's, me and Nick have built our businesses together over a 15 year period. You know, Jeremy's been in and out of work for many, many years. He's had highs and he's had lows. Greg's yeah, yeah. moved to Sydney on his own, you know, yeah. with these, you know, with big celebrities, all this miscon all this misconception about fame and money and then it solves yes. everything it's boring guys and i can tell you the kardashians around the corner they live in calabasas kobe bryant dropped dropped out the sky 1.5 miles from my house it's such an equalizer now and what i want to say is that i don't feel any different to anyone else yeah no. i get to i get to go in my pool every morning and i get i get i get all these luxuries but i just want to go home but you know what guys i can't go home because my mum is going to send me insane if I go back. And uh, we, we're going to, we're going to, you know, I've said, I've got a three day rule at my house in Yorkshire with my parents. Three days and it's gone. And then I, I think it's you making, I think it's you making them go insane. It's not the other way around. Right? <laughs> no, 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 I'm, glad, Nick, I'm glad you said that. Yeah. Yeah, Jeremy just reminded me of something. When Jeremy said about the, um, about getting on a long plane journey, it reminded me of, of something like that. And, and funny enough, it also something came up on my phone today on a, on a memory thing on my phone. Exactly two years ago, this week, right now, two years ago, I was halfway through a week, uh, what turned out to be a week in hospital. Uh -huh. um, I remember, remember I, Greg, I remember, I remember. Yeah, it was, and it was exactly at this point, and I basically, I didn't know it at the time, I basically, I woke up, um, in, I, I, was in, I, I was in bed, and I woke up screaming, and I didn't know why, and I, I got out of bed, I fell through the door in my bedroom, and I thought, I thought it was in an earthquake. I was in Melbourne at the time, and I thought it was an earthquake. Um, and then when I realized it was, was something that was happening to me, I ended up in hospital and they said, um, uh, you've got basically, they, we think you've got vertigo. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and it was um, brought on, they said, oh, we think you, it's chances are, we think it might be brought on by uh, panic attacks. And, um, you know, just, and again, something Jeremy said, you know, about anxiety and it's real. Cause I was someone that was like, what's a, you know, I thought it was yeah. all a bit millennial. What's a panic attack? You know, what's anxiety? You know, what really is the question? But then when, they, I, when he said this about, oh, we think you've been having panic attacks, I was like, oh, it can't have been a panic attack. I was in bed. And he, he said, well, the doc, this is the doctor. He said, yeah, well, you can have panic attacks in your sleep. How did you wake up? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I woke up screaming. Was that a panic attack? And he's like, yeah, that's why you've got birds ago. <laughs> hey, hey, and I, <laughs> I thought I you were going to say that Andy Newton Lee was in your bed. And that's why you <laughs> woke up screaming. Was that, that week in hospital was a similar to Jeremy's um, uh, thing about a long a long, um, a long plane journey. And I had that week in hospital. And, and a couple of weeks later, um, I was in a cab and the cab happened to go past the hospital. And when I saw the hospital, in my heart and in my head, I was like, oh, that's the hospital. That was a good week. And I realized yeah. that that week was my favorite week in Australia, was the week I was in hospital. And that's uh, kind of like this, you know, you have to slow down. Okay, so going? Listen, I'm gonna round it up now. I want to say thank you to everybody. Thank you to Andy in Los Angeles. I think your pool boy is still flat on the uh, swimming pool. He's been there for three I weeks. I don't have a pool boy. I don't have uh, a pool boy. You, you had a pool boy. I do my own. Yeah, I think you man. are the pool boy. A pool man. <laughs> exactly. He denies he's got any money. He's got no pool. But he's next door to the Kardashians. Yeah, a fifteen million dollar company, though. <laughs> it's not. It's not. I don't, I'm it's just so renting. Kobe Bryant just totally dropped off next guys, door. Guys, <laughs> guys, I'm, guys, I'm doing, doing, doing what everyone else does. Guys, I'm doing what everyone else does. I'm renting it. And soon the money's going to run out. So that's why this concept's got, this concept's got to take off. Because okay, I can't afford it. Yeah. <laughs> guys, I want to, you actually Brilliant. have been, we've done quite a few of these lockdown lads, but you're the ultimate lockdown lad boy band. You look fantastic. <laughs> you sound fantastic. You are fantastic. Uh, and hopefully you'll come on the show again. But thank you for this 
Look, oh, here he is. Andy, next time, please shave, get a new top, and don't try and look like David Beckham because you never will. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> oh, Thank you for watching. Well, Thank you, Nikki. Yeah. Love you. Andy, love you. Greg, love you. Love you. Love you. See you, mate. Thank you, Nick. Hello. If you have been affected by any of the issues raised during this program, find the number on screen or visit www.samaritans.org.